<laughs> this is the, the first one I started reading from uh, on YouTube, and I thought it, the, the print's a little tough, but I thought I'd keep it as a backup, but first I needed, needed it to represent the point I'm making. <laughs> Got plenty more spray paint where that came from. <laughs> Don't let me find any BOMs lying around. <laughs> I'll just have to paint them gold. And uh, I have half of a six pack left and two St. Pauli girls. So more than enough to handle the, I think, 15. It then it came to pass is, uh, in this in chapter 18. So uh, let's get started. Can't start yet. I really like this uh, holy ale. <laughs> that is really nice. Okay, chapter 18 of First Nephi. We're almost done with this book. I mean, the first book. <laughs> And it came to pass that they did worship the Lord, and did go forth with me, and we did work timbers of curious workmanship. And the Lord did show me from time to time, after what manner I should work the timbers of the ship. Now I, Nephi, did not work the timbers after the manner which was learned by men, Neither did I build the ship after the manner of men. But I did build it after the manner which the Lord had shown me, shown unto me. Wherefore, it was not after the manner of men. Okay, I think we get it finally. Thanks for hammering that point home. At the expense of uh, using up valuable space on the page, on the plate of metal. Precious metal. <sighs> and I, Nephi, did go into the mount oft, and I did pray oft <laughs> unto the Lord, wherefore the Lord showed unto me great things, because apparently you get much better reception on top of that mountain <laughs> than you would at home, like in your tent, safe. And comfortable. Oh, well, you know, it's all about sacrifice, isn't it? Uh. Hmm. And it came to pass that after I had finished the ship, according to the word of the Lord, my brethren beheld that it was good, and that the workmanship was exceedingly fine. Wherefore they did humble themselves again before the Lord. And it came to pass that the voice of the Lord came unto my came unto my father, just his father, <sighs> that we should arise and go down into the ship. <sighs> kind of short on detail here. And originality. And it came to pass that on the morrow, after we had prepared all things, much fruits and meat from the wilderness, and honey in abundance, and provisions according to that which the Lord had con commanded us, we did go down into the ship with all our loading and our seeds and whatsoever thing we had brought with us. Everyone according to his age. Wherefore, we did go down into the ship with our wives and our children. 
and now my father had begat two sons in the wilderness. The elder was called Jacob, and the younger Joseph. Mm. Magically delicious. And it came to pass, after we had gone down into the ship, and had taken with us all our provisions and things which had been commanded, of, commanded us, we did put forth into the sea, and we were driven forth before the wind towards the promised land. I should start up some music right about now, some seafaring music. <sighs> and after we had been driven forth before the wind for the space of many days, behold, my brethren and the sons of Ishmael and also their wives began to make themselves merry. <coughs> Guess they got into the rum. Insomuch that they began to dance and sing and to speak with much rudeness, yea, even that they did forget by what power they had been brought thither. <clears throat> yea, they were lifted up unto exceeding rudeness. And I, Nephi, began to fear exceed exceedingly lest the Lord should be angry with us and smite us because of our iniquity that we should be swallowed up in the depths of the sea. Wherefore, I, Nephi, <laughs> began to speak to them with much soberness. <laughs> yeah, they were drinking. But behold, they were angry with me, because you're a buzz killer, Nephi. <laughs> you're a fucking buzz killer. <laughs> Saying, we will not that our young... Uh, younger brother shall be a ruler over us. And it came to pass that Laman and Lemuel did take me and bind me with cords. Sound familiar? And they did treat me with much harshness. Now, you know what happened last time. I mean, he got superpowers and broke his bonds that bound him. So, uh, that's going to happen again, right? <laughs> Nevertheless, the Lord did suffer it that he might sh show forth his power unto the fulfilling of his word, which he had spoken concerning the wicked. The Lord did suffer it to show this. Who's suffering? The Lord or Nephi? <laughs> oh. Hmm. Mm. And it came to pass that after they had bound me in so much that I could not move the compass which the Lord had prepared, wait, which had been prepared of the Lord did cease to work. Oh, he showed them. How about some superpowers so Nephi can break his bonds and tase him again? You know, send the shock of God their way. No, but let's do it this way instead, you know, almost as if there's no God. <laughs> Just the compass stopped working. They'll read God into anything, won't they? Wherefore, they knew not whither they should steer the ship because the compass didn't work, insomuch that there arose a great storm, yea, a great and terrible tempest. <laughs> and we were driven back upon the waters for the space of three days. Specific, finally, but kind of a ritualistic number, isn't it? And they began to be frightened exceedingly, lest they should be drowned in the sea. Nevertheless, they did not loose me. 
and on the fourth day, which we had been driven back, the tempest began to be exceeding sore. And it came to pass that we were about to be swallowed up in the depths of the sea. And after we had been driven back upon the waters of the space of four days, my brethren began to see that the judgments of God were upon them, and that they must perish save that perish save that they should repent of their iniquities. Wherefore they came unto me and loosed the bands which were upon my wrists. So he's been tied there for like Almost a week. Yeah, good work, God. <laughs> and behold, wait, yeah, loose the bonds, bands which were upon my wrists. And behold, they had swollen exceedingly, and also mine ankles were much swollen, and great was the soreness thereof. Nevertheless, I did look unto my God, and I did praise him all the day long. And I did not murmur against the Lord because of mine afflictions. He's Yahweh's biatch. Now my father Lehi had said many things unto them, and also unto the sons of Ishmael. But behold, they did not breathe out but they, behold, they did breathe out much threatenings against anyone that should speak for me. And my parents were stricken in years, and having suffered much grief because of their children, <laughs> they were brought down, yea, even upon their sick beds, because of their grief and much sorrow, cue the violin, and the iniquity of my brethren, they were brought near even to be carried out of this time to meet <coughs> their God. Yea, their gray hairs were about to be brought, brought down to lie low in the dust. Yea, even they were near to be cast with sorrow into a watery grave. And Jacob and Joseph also being young, having need of much nourishment, were grieved because of the afflictions of their mother, and also my wife, who never gets named, with her tears and prayers, and also my children, did not soften the hearts of my brethren that they would loose me. He's still going on about that. They already let you go, dickhead. Sorry, it does get annoying time to time. All right, got to open my mind and show some respect. Okay, here it is. And there was nothing save it were the power of God which threatened them with destruction could soften their hearts. Wherefore, when they saw that they were about to be swallowed up in the depths of the sea, they repented, repented the thing which they had done insomuch that they had loosed me. All right, fine. We can move on. Jesus, a biatch. And it came to pass, after they had loosed me, behold, I took the compass, and it did work, whither I desired it. And It came to pass that I prayed unto the Lord, and after I had prayed, the winds did cease, and the storm did cease, and there was a great calm. Any one of those could have made a sentence that cleared the whole thing up, because you're running on gold. God. Ugh. And it came to pass that I, Nephi, <coughs> did 
did guide the ship that we sailed again towards the promised land. And it came to pass that after we had sailed for the space of many days. <clears throat> That's all the information you're going to gonna get about that. Yeah, they sailed for the space of many days. We did arrive at the promised land. Wow. I mean, how many days are you talking about? A couple of weeks? A month? Many days. little research, please. I mean, if I were going to fake this book, I'd get the numbers right. I mean, they could have gotten those numbers. I think it's like, what is it, like six months, I think, by ship, if I'm right. Maybe it's three. I think it's six, though. It's a long time to be at sea. <laughs> I wouldn't know. I've never left this country, and that's too damn bad. It's kind of sad, actually. We did arrive at the Promised Land just after many days at, the, at sea. <laughs> and we went forth unto the land and did pitch our tents. And we did call it the Promised Land, uncapitalized. <laughs> ah, the last of the pythons. I mean, just the beer. I mean, long may they live. It's my, those are the guys, man. Ah. Ah. Oh. And it came to pass that we did begin to till the earth. And we began to plant seeds. Yea, we did put all, put all our seeds into the earth, which had brought we which we had brought from the land of Jerusalem. <coughs> And it came to pass that they did grow exceedingly, wherefore we were blessed in abundance. God, just like Swiss Family Robinson or some shit like that. I don't think the pilgrims had the same experience, did they? I don't think any of the pioneers had such a nice, nice transition. This is just such a Fairy tale perfect. Uh, Deus ex machina. <sighs> and it came to pass that we did find upon the land of promise, uncapitalized, as we journeyed in the wilderness, that there were beasts in the forest of every kind, both the cow, pre Columbus. 600 B.C. <laughs> yeah, both the cow and the ox and the ass and the horse and the goat and the wild goat and all manner of wild animals which were for the use of men. Yeah, there were horses uh, in North America, but they died out in prehistoric times, uh, like around the Ice Age, I believe. I'm not an expert on that, but uh, definitely long before Nephi and the gang showed up. And cows. I mean, this is all shit that was brought over from Spain, you know, from Europe, and Asia over time. I mean, over a progression of time, but... You know, what did Joseph Smith know? You know, with his magic rocks and magic glasses and magic bullshit. And we did find all manner of ore, 
both of gold and of silver and of copper. End of chapter. So, they claim that there were horses and cows and domesticated goats as well as the mountain, the wild goats, like, you know, mountain sheep and stuff. No mention of uh, bison or grizzly bears or deer. <laughs> and by the way, having already read this book, they do not mention an extinction event <laughs> within the, the, the pages of uh, this chunk of gold. Anyway, I'm just trying to, you know, just trying to um, understand this magic book. And that's why I got to read this whole fucking thing. But we're coming up to do a bunch of Isaiah. And I haven't figured out how I'm going to do this, but uh, it'll be a little different next time, the next few videos as I get out of, uh, as I finish First Nephi, and we can proceed to uh, Second Nephi. Anyhow, I'm going to finish this. This is really nice. Holy Grail, Ale. Anyway, that was the great ocean voyage and how they settle. And if you expect to hear more about how they established their society, well, it's going to take a backseat to them ripping off Isaiah and prophesying and all this shit. But um, not very satisfying was that. But got it out of the way. And that was very fucking important. <clears throat> Peace out.